So what my presentation is going to be on is some uh, novel methods for using the system in which you can do a couple of different things that when we originally gotten it hadn't been done or had any <coughs> software written for them before. So just a quick out, just a quick outline, we're going to go over device hardware and software and then we're going to go through a few demos of the methods that I developed to use with it. So the first thing is it's the Blaris uh, H prototype. There's actually a slight typo here. It isn't an array of crystals, uh, but it does use a six centimeter cube crystal, uh, and it is a Compton, and it uses the Compton scattering image principle to develop an uh, image of gamma rays uh, using, yeah. So uh, it was designed originally for nuclear power and homeland security applications, but however, we're using it uh, in some other stuff. So, the first was a lost check source localization. We had a we had a check source that we put in a lab, and we put it in a notebook, and we just wanted to see uh, how effectively you could find this source by uh, using this camera. So we originally started about two meters away from it, and we ran for an hour. And as you can see, the source was placed on the desk in that image. And after about an hour, an image formed right on the desk where the source was placed. So we moved it in a little bit closer for positional refinement, and after 25 minutes we got a clearer picture on the notebook of where the source was. So the next thing we did uh, was we imaged NORM with it. Uh, and NORM is interesting to image since there are multiple radionuclide peaks from the progeny. And you can image each of those peaks individually, or you can image them all at once. So what we did was we have a thoriated capacitor in our lab that we use as a thorium standard, essentially. And it's, uh, so what I did was I placed uh, it on the ground and I imaged it overnight for about 10 hours. And as you can see, you get an image on the left side of the capacitor. And this was interesting because we actually didn't know that the activity on this capacitor was localized to the left side, as you can see in this image. And we uh, actually tested it again with a couple of different detectors and found that yes, in fact, it does localize to that left side. And the left side is about twice as active as the right side. Uh, there were some uh, limitations that we found with it when we were trying to do this, though. Uh, we had some radium dials, and as you can see, if things are really close together, it's just going to go to the center of where the most counts are. So it images straight to the middle on our model for that. Uh, and that was a bit of a limitation for us. Uh, so the next thing we did was we uh, also took it to our cesium dosimetry facility where we have a nine Curie cesium source. And we imaged that while it was shielded. So this is an image, uh, I think it was about a half hour long, I don't have it labeled here, of it. And as you can see, you, uh, the image appears through the shielding even while the shielding is up. And you can clearly see where the source is in the irradiator. However, when the irradiator and the source is brought up, and it's not shielded anymore. You get some limitations due to the high flux. This is only in the older models, though. Apparently, this has been fixed on the newer models. But we have one of the original prototypes of the device. So you get this very bizarre-looking spectra. Uh, the most interesting thing, I think, that we did was we managed to get it to image scatter, which uh, I know, I think they have code for it doing this now. But uh, well, we did it. They didn't yet. So how, the method we used for this was essentially we, I looked at how it was imaging, and it essentially images all the counts under a peak. So I just placed a peak every 5 keV in the scatter window that we wanted to image, and we then pointed it at a polymethyl acrylate phantom that was put in the broad beam of the cesium source. And as you can see in the image here, there is a distinct image on the actual phantom of where the scatter is coming from. And I have it from another angle here where you can see it a little bit better, actually. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, there is an obvious scatter image formed on the phantom. Okay, so another, so a final thing we did was I wanted to image multiple radionuclide sources at once. So we have our source cabinet in our lab, and I just pointed it at the source cabinet overnight. And as you can see, it imaged to uh, the different sources we have in it. So we have a bunch of check sources uh, for calibration of gamma spectroscopy equipment. And they're all in about the same place because they're stored in a little source box. So you can see all of them appeared in about the same place on our spectra here, and on our image of the spectra here. And we also have some radium canisters that we keep on top of them. Uh, so as you can see, those are the 
images of our calibration sources. However, the interesting thing that happened was when we tried to image the thorium capacitors, which are kept at the bottom of the cabinet, is that we got this interference, as you can see, where some of the sources where the check sources were being stored were interfering with the uh, image of the thorium capacitors. Because there are certain uh, radionuclides that emit at very close energy levels to the ones in the thorium that are mostly in the radium and the barium-133. Uh, so the way we fixed that was we uh, cut out part of the spec, cut out part of the progeny that were being imaged by the detector to image the thorium. And when we just imaged the actinium-228, we actually get this much nicer image where it's localizing much better to the bottom of the cabinet where the thorium capacitors are stored. Uh, so in conclusion, we found a couple of limitations of the detector. It's not this, our model isn't capable of imaging at high flux. Uh, it has some spatial resolution concerns, and there can be interference when mul measuring multiple radionuclides. And another thing I didn't really mention is with lower activity sources, you can sometimes you have to image for quite a long time to get a nice localized image. Uh, and then we just had some promising applications. You can use it for radiation safety and environments, uh, in university environments. You can find lost check sources and stuff. Uh, radiation scatter study and uh, identification of norm. Uh, are there any questions? Another important point for the rest of the talk is that each component of an organic scintillator has a distinct dependence on temperature. And this analysis considers the